This pro player destroyed an entire team by himself. This pro player pulled off an impossible 1v4. And this pro player hit a 1 in a million collateral shot that would alter history. Jet Force, it's all down to Alpha yet. Noise everywhere, swing! These are the best plays in the world, compiled by Riot themselves in their video, the best 15 plays of VCT 2023. Today, we're going to watch and break down the top 7 plays from that list. After watching each play, we need to decide whether the pro player dominated their opponents through sheer aim or tactical brilliance. Now, these world-class plays are almost always a combination of both, so having to choose one or the other is where the challenge comes in. I did this challenge in part 1, where we broke down plays 15 to 8, and spoiler alert, the score is currently tied 4 to 4. So now, what will the score be after we watch the top 7 plays of the year? Are the best plays of the year born from godlike aim or genius brains? When you're in a game and you pull up the scoreboard, what do you see? KDA and, well, that's basically it. There's a ton of stats that Riot are keeping hidden from you, but you can gain access to those hidden stats for free thanks to our sponsor, Valorant Tracker. With Tracker, you can see your teammates and opponents' career stats at the start of a match, so you can tweak your playstyle based on everyone's skill level. As your match goes on, everyone's stats are tracked and updated live. These stats include first kill, first death, entry success rate, cast, clutches, and more. Imagine the adaptations you can make knowing these numbers. And all that is just scratch the surface. Give Valent Tracker a try today by downloading it for free using my link in the description below. They just got wiped out by the aggression out of NRG. And any sort of gun that they can take out of the hands of NRG. It is magnified in the long run, and that's two. 1v2 for the ace. This would be unreal. On this stage. Faz o um clique da Spike, tenta forçar a movimentação e contra oh, mais oh, o Abate oh, agora! Oh, é o X1, sem informação! It's just a 1v1 now, and he still has time! The spam from Victor as he repositions now, 13 seconds left. Victor has a lot of utility here. But the swing out from Sada with the flash, waiting, crosshair trade! Let's go! The 1v5 ace clutch! I think this is a similar case with Com's play, where the play becomes even more impressive without the edits. So to set the scene, Loud are in a tragic 2v5 situation. To make matters worse, NRG have a ton of alts online, and Finesse is only one off his breach ult. This should be impossible for Loud to win, unless a miracle happens. So in a 2v5, the only way to win is to keep isolating 1v1s and keep winning your 1s until you're not at a numbers disadvantage. Sounds simple enough, except Sadak are against NRG, a world-class team with incredible team play. So how did he do it? First, Sadak wants info. Energy could be anywhere and he needs something to work with. So he KO knives Sight. I mean, they have plenty of money here. You see Whoa, did you hear that? Brimstone made a step and Sadak heard it. So right now, Sadak knows that there's one player heaven and one player close canteen. He systematically peeks every angle energy could be holding him from before spamming the box perfectly at head height to take down Brimstone. Expecting a trade, he flicks back on his sight, then ducks back behind cover. But no one from energy over peak, they've lost the timing to trade. Now that Sadok revealed his location with that first pick, Loud speed up their B hit. Sadok Molly's default, it forces Sky out into the open. Energy are an elite team though, so Sky makes the most out of the situation and swings B main from sight side, and Jet was the heaven player double peaks with Sky. Basically, even though energy were forced into an unfavorable situation, they instantly turned it around and created a double peak. That is insane. Sadok lands some clean shots, the skirmish ends, Loud come out on top. Sadok is now in a 1v2, but energy know exactly where he is, and Sadok has no idea where the last two players are. To make matters worse, the last two energy players both have powerful round winning ults for retake. Yes, while Sadak was fighting the main, Finesse used the opportunity to farm the orb dish for his breach ult to come online. Sadak checks the flank, no one is peeking. He checks sight and spawn, nothing. 
energy aren't giving him anything. So Sadak knows that he cannot plant. The second he does, energy are going to use their ult and it'll be checkmate. So he taps the spike to bait out a peek. Come on, energy need to give him something. And Breach takes the bait. Sadak catches Breach out in the open with his pants down. And now it's a 1v1. It's anyone's round. He taps the spike again to bait out a peek. 18 seconds left, but it only takes 4 seconds to plant. So he knows he has a whole 14 seconds to work with. It's just a 1v1 now. And he still has time! Now that Sadak knows exactly where the last player is, he knows he's safe to plant the spike. Victor knows he was just by the canteen, so he repositions to Jen while Sadak is playing the spike. The spike gets planted, Sadak knows Victor could be walked up close, so he immediately pop flashes out. Victor gets full blinded and ducks behind Jen. Sadak has the advantage now. He knows exactly where Victor is, and Victor just lost all info. So, Sadak finds a cozy off angle and posts for Victor's inevitable swing. Inevitable, inevitable. Inevitable. So Salak finds a cozy off angle and posts for Victor, who has to swing him. With the flash, waiting, crosshair trade! And that's how Salak pulled off this legendary ace clutch. Now to decide, aim or brains. Of course, Sadak had to hit his shots, but you can probably tell by how long this breakdown was that I think that this round is definitely a Brains play. And Brains somehow takes the lead. And guys, we haven't even gotten to the top 5 plays yet. Never quite gonna be tested like this. Map 5 in the best of 5, everything to play for. One big play, one clutch could be all it takes. Asmas hunting for information, hunting for a glimpse, a glimmer. Anything to make this doable. Jet Force, it's all down to Alphia. Swing! Oh, go! I love that pop off energy. It's a short play, but the magic of this play definitely comes from the immense stakes that weighed on this singular round. I actually made a whole video on this game, so make sure you check it out if you haven't yet. Anyways, this seems like a straightforward play, but what if I told you that there are some overlooked factors that everybody missed? No way! Let me explain. So it starts off as a 2v2. Lau needs to defuse, Fnatic playing double yellow. Alpha Year is playing Killjoy, so he has a molly on Spike. Kalanzine's about to tap, he sees a molly and breaks it. Now look at Kalanzine's weapon. It's a stinger. A weapon with a fast fire rate, but not a lot of bullets. Kalanzine taps the Spike. Durka dies. Alpha jiggle piece of Spike. Kalanzine shoots a quick burst at Alpha Year's shoulder. Now the clip begins. Alpha Year in a 1v2. Kalanzine taps the Spike. Alpha Jiggle Peaks and baits out yet another burst from Kalanzine. Eight bullets left in that stinger. Aspas then dashes forward. Alpha Year looks up because he thinks Aspas dashed above them. But in reality, Aspas was just trying to group up with Kalanzine so they can double peek together. And look at the silhouettes. Loud double peek with perfect spacing. This should not be winnable for Alpha Year. But what he does next is genius. He hears a swing coming, so he takes a step back into an off angle. Loud double swing, Kalanzine actually catches a glimpse of Alpha Year's shoulder but misses his burst. Now Kalanzine has almost no bullets left in that stinger, so he takes a split second to swap to his classic. But Aspas is still swinging, so the spacing between them starts to close. And Alpha Year, who knows that Loud probably lowered their guard for a split second since they just cleared that first common angle, catches the perfect timing when they're both lined up. And all these tiny factors stacked up led to this iconic- Okay, now we need to decide, aim or brains. I'll be honest, I thought this play was aim at first, but after this breakdown just now, I'm starting to reconsider. Alpha Year outplayed the double peak by predicting where Loud will pre-aim, dodging out of the angle, and then re-peaking from an off angle for an unexpected timing. I also imagine this clip probably would have gone different if Kalanzine had a rifle instead of a stinger. Okay, I think I convinced myself. Now that I look at it, the shot Alpha landed wasn't technically mechanically intensive. So if I had to choose between aim or brains, I have to lean towards this being a brains play. Let me know if you guys agree in the comments. But holy crap, I can't believe it. Brains has somehow widened the lead 6 to 4. But let's see if this trend continues as we enter the top 5 plays of the year. The yeah, flank right behind them, and that's what I was calling out earlier, EDG. They have taken up all that space, and they are not aware of it! Hold on. Shuts that down, but the util out in their hands, and they are putting the squeeze no right way. onto them. Oh, Holy crap, Patino is a freaking god. 
So the play starts with Patinho in the absolute worst position he could be in. He is literally surrounded by the entire EDG team, about to get penetrated from all sides. His back is against a wall, it's do or die. And let's just say, Patinho didn't feel like dying. He first posted an off angle, catches Sky off guard. He flicks back to the smoke, expecting someone to swing out for a trade. But look at his position. He's completely out in the open, exposed to both the smoke swing and a late heaven swing. And his gut is screaming, yo, you're in a dangerous spot right now. Move, move, move. So he takes a step back to fall out of the line of sight of the heaven swing to isolate the CT fight. And because of this, he actually dodges a lethal burst of bullets from the heaven player. He reacts, flicks to his right, doesn't see anyone, but still pre-fires a shot. This random shot is to bait the CT player to swing out, since they'll think that Patinio is distracted fighting Heaven, and it works like a charm. He kills Viper, flicks back since he expects a trade swing, kills Jet, expects another trade, flicks back CT, kills Raze, expects a trade on that kill too, flicks back Heaven. He ends up dying, but he stalled enough time for his teammate to get up ramp and trade him out. Okay, so is this play a result of aim? or brains. I mean, the man was literally in the middle of the entire enemy team, the worst position possible. And his only choice was to aim his way out of that situation. And aim he did. No, that is Patino read the situation perfectly and landed every single shot. But the man probably broke his wrist in the process. So I think that this is an aim play. Now you're gonna hear that door breaking, now you know what's coming your way. This is all down towards Soulcast and Safe. Do they get that nice little unity between each other? Those crossfires in place. Good for one spot second. Oh, the adjustment! Phone call deleted! Safe! He's having a round! Absolute stunning work from Safe! My what god, just bangers safe? after bangers. Blitz 4K in the last play, Blitz Ace for this play. But I would argue that this play is completely different than the last. Check it out. So Vitality are about to split B. They start by breaking the market door. Safe is holding B main by himself. He's about to get pinched, but Soulcast reacts with a perfect KO Molly in response, delaying the market push. This gives Safe a bit more time and space. He knows he's about to get split on, so he channels his jet dash. He hears footsteps to his left, so he preems left, gets one. In the corner of his eye, he saw jet dash out of market. He knows there's bound to be a teammate behind her, so he smokes his left, giving him cover to focus on the market fight. Vitality's KO flash just barely misses, so Safe still has perfect vision. He takes down Omen, dashes right to dodge the spam from his left. He knows Silva is probably not going to run through the jet smoke blind, so he pre-aims right of the smoke, expecting Silva to take that pathing. Safe's read was right. He takes down Silva. Now, B-Main is cleared. The rest of Vitality probably came from Market, so he starts working each and every angle, knowing he has to isolate a 1v1 before it becomes a 1v2. He flicks down to Kale. His teammate who just died to jet is calming, Jet's lane, Jet's lane. Safe expects Jet to insta swing him, pre aiming at B main. So, right after the kill on KO, he instinctively dashes forward. A risky play, but if his read was right, he would have completely shattered Jet's ankles. But luckily, Jet was actually focused on CT, since Safe's teammate was distracting her by spamming lane through the CT smoke. Jet was caught off guard, and Safe lands a clean headshot for the final kill. Okay, so this play was really similar to the last. A player, surrounded, about to get pinched, comes out victorious. A key difference is that the last play was just pure raw aim. Whereas this clip involved more utility and a little bit of teamwork. But now to decide, is this play aim or brains? This is tough. Because I feel like when it comes to decision making and util usage, Safe basically played it as well as he could have. But does that mean that this is a brains play? My gut feeling tells me that's not exactly right. I now realize I probably should have defined at the start what it means for a play to be aim versus what it means for a play to be brains. Like, we've gotten into a situation so far where the star of a play is neither aim nor brains, but maybe it's their movement during a gunfight. So maybe the question aim versus brains is flawed in the first place. I don't know, it's a lot to think about. For now, I'm just gonna go with my gut. Just look at the play. That's some freaking crispy aim. This is a name clip. So now, aim and brains are actually tied six to six. Wow, the score could go either way. So don't leave just yet, because we're finally in the top three plays of the year. Flash from Trailblazers, it's all coordinated together towards the back though. There's a judge waiting for them. Do they dare step? Do they dare venture? Kang Kang falls. 
It's Paper X in control. Lovely response. Ready for it. And something. <laughs> Yo, this is a definition of a blue lock egoist. Like, this is a clip that just screams. I am better. But honestly, this clip is pretty straightforward. But he definitely did some really cool stuff. For starters, at the beginning of the play, he updrafts up. This is to get info into streets. And if he does end up spotting someone, he can't die because he's going to drop down right behind Pillar for cover. So this is a super creative, low risk way of getting info. But also by updrafting, any EDG player that are close will hear that sound cue and might think he's pushing heaven. So this puts a ton more pressure on the retakers. It's just brilliant. Then the heaven smoke start fading. So something draws his focus up, but then he sees Omen's little feet CT and punishes them for that peak. This is why you don't swing into a one way guys. His teammate starts playing, but look where that plant is. It's behind this double stack and it's spammable from streets. Something knows this and wants to prevent that. So his ball is enlarged and like Popeye on spinach and he just stands out in the open and dares the street players to peek him. Do it. He kills them both, runs out of bullets, but wait, he's still got two more shots in his shorty. And without missing a single beat, he updrafts onto heaven to obliterate the last player. So now, aim or brains? Well, something definitely did a lot of cool stuff. Did he outplay his opponents with that cool stuff? Eh, not really. But was it cool to watch? Hell yeah. This is definitely an aim play. So aim breaks the tie, seven to six. And now we move on to the one and only. Suss this out. The nade in the tower, showstopper drawn out, but they do not suspect it whatsoever. Muzzle fight, Bustio. But the shutdown is there. Demon one with two, drops the smoke. The spike now stranded in arcade. Public again coming down, but he spots the raise before the bloom swings on the corner, and he's on for the ace. Zest lingering above, he spotted it. Man, the Demon One is different on smokes. I think the hardest part about getting consistent results on smokes is that unlike duelists or initiators, controllers don't really have as many tools to directly help them win a gunfight. So in my opinion, having strong fundamentals is especially important when you're trying to play controller. And Demon 1 showcases that right in this clip. To set the scene, DRX are setting up for a B split. As for EDG, they place a killjoy turret here that not only holds the B main run out, but it also holds the arcade peak. So the Killjoy turret is going to take first contact and Demon 1 who's hiding behind these boxes is going to peek off the turret. That is EG's arcade setup. DRX kick off their execute. They raise Nate, Killjoy Molly, Breach Aftershock Heaven. Now since Heaven's cleared, they pop the razor and path onto site. Demon 1 can see and hear all this. So in the split second that DRX are completely focused on their sight hit, Demon 1 swings out. He wins the fight against Killjoy who is actually holding for him then shoots Breach on the side of the head. Luckily for Demon 1, the spike drops right in front of them. And Buzz peeks from sight to try to trade, but Demon 1 isn't going to give DRX a free 50-50 gunfight. Since he has a spike, he knows that DRX need to push into him. So he smokes out the choke in heaven. The ball is in DRX's court now. Will DRX push through the smokes blind to try to retrieve the spike? Or will they wait and get collapsed on by the rest of EG? They choose the former poison. DRX are now grouped up in the smokes, ready to peek out together. Demon 1 knows that, but he needs to stop for his teammates to rotate over. So look what he does. He drops a smoke on the spike. Then he peeks with the smoke as it's coming down. Look at Buzz's silhouette. He was honed in on Demon 1's position, but the second the smoke dropped, he thought that he had cover and was safe, so he briefly dropped his guard to pick up the spike. And Demon 1 strikes at this exact moment and takes down Buzz. Mako just reloaded his gun, so Demon 1 knows precisely where he is. So before Mako can reposition, Demon 1 swings out to capitalize on that info to get his fourth kill. Now Demon 1 wants his ace. But where's the last player? Brim was alone bottom arcade. If Viper was with Brim, then there would have been a trade. So Demon 1 knows that Viper has to either be under sewers or up in heaven. He decides to hold his flank for a bit since heaven is still smoked off. Notice that he's sitting in a knoff angle for the sewers fight. And he's using the box's cover so he's not exposed to heaven. And when his heaven smoke fades, he peeks back to check it, finds Viper, and completes his ace. <laughs> Six to one off the back of the ace, Demon One shuts it down! Okay, so is this play aim or brains? I think if I were in DRX's shoes, I would feel so frustrated because of how well Demon One played that scenario. He didn't give DRX any free fights and kept 
forcing DRX to take these uncomfortable engagements. Yes, Demon 1 landed a ton of crispy shots. I mean, it's Demon 1 after all, but I would say that this is a brains play. You know, at the start of this video, I was so sure that it was gonna be just your typical aim montage. Personally, I think 12 of the 15 plays will be just raw aim clips. Now, I swear this isn't scripted, but aim and brains are now tied seven to seven. I guess at the highest level, when everyone has great aim, the quality of their split second decision making is what makes or breaks a play. That might explain all these brain out plays. But alas, there can only be one winner, one answer to this question. Are the best plays of the year born from godlike aim or genius brains? It all comes down to this final play, the number one play of the year. Big gap between him and Chi Chi. There's the first. Sire player goes down. He falls away with almost no threat. The three players on his team already start flooding through. Oh, Jordan Long. The readjust gorgeous. 50 HP, and he still wants more. Watch me ignite it. Another for Kang Kang. This guy is playing it perfectly. One by one, they face him, and one by one, they foul. There's no way you get away with that. Wow. This is actually such a deceiving play. All right, I'll be brave and say it. At first glance, this play looks kind of mid. <laughs> but it definitely gets more impressive once you have context. First thing to note, this is EDG's bonus round versus T1's full buy. This is a round EDG were not supposed to win. Except, Kong Kong decides to hero buy an up. It's a gamble, but luckily for him, he guesses right. T1 called a five-man rush C long right into Kong Kong. The barriers drop, T1 rushed forward. Kong Kong can hear this, so he ducks back, predicting that T1's gonna flash the corner. Gap between him and Cheech. He guesses right. He then repeats with his dash popped. He picks off Jet, dashes away. Now T1 just lost their entry, but that's not enough to stop the execute. Now, the thing about Haven is that the sights are incredibly small. And against teams that know how to coordinate their util, it can feel almost impossible to defend against. This is an example of that. T1 Breach Sun and Sova shocks this line. They must have done their research and know that Kong Kong likes to play that exact spot. The Breach Sun also stops the peak from back plat. Then T1 Recon backside and Kildren Molly's the double stack. The Recon clears back sight. The Molly clears that tough off angle. The only spot Kong Kong can play to dodge a Recon is next to Logs, which is where he ends up. But T1 know this too. So they Breach Flash the first corner, which blinds that angle, but Kong Kong's a monster and turns it. But T1 know that's a possibility too, so they layer an open blind on top of that, plus another shock dart where Kong Kong would usually back off to. This is such an oppressive execute. Usually Kong Kong would have definitely gone pushed back, but instead, what happens is Kong Kong dodges a breach flash, he sees the omen blind coming, but he swings into the omen blind and catches a glimpse of breach a fraction of a second before he gets blinded. This man is pushing aggression to its absolute limits. He then backs off, runs into the perfectly placed shock dart, and drops to 52 health. Luckily, his teammate Cypher pops his cage default, which lets Kong Kong reposition to back plat, and the rest was history. He still wants more. Cage in place, and he gets a second of respite here as they close the gap! Another for Kang Kang! This guy is playing it perfectly! Now, this was an incredible play, but I don't know if it's number one play of the year incredible. Hmm. Oh, but this is definitely an aim play.